Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Russ Kinsler. Russ is a fisheries biologist stationed in Riverdale, also works with the salmon program here on Lake Skakawea. Um, we're going to talk about that. Russ, this is the time of year that we start to see fishermen start to pull out the heavy equipment and start uh, plying the waters of Lake Skakawea. Yeah, historically, uh, middle of July is when the salmon start to bite. Um, they'll get a few at the beginning of July, but the middle of July towards the end is when it really gets going, and then August is the best month best month to salmon fish on Sakakawea. All right, let's give webcast viewers a little background on the salmon program in Lake Sakakawea. When did we start stocking salmon here and why? Okay, we started stocking salmon in 1970 and those were uh, coho salmon or silver. And then in 1976, we switched to uh, Chinook salmon, which are king salmon. And that's what we've been using since. Um, we started stocking them because Lake Sakakawea is a really deep lake and has cold water that was not being utilized by any other fish. So we put uh, salmon in there to utilize that cold water and give uh, fishermen another species of fish to chase. Just another opportunity. Yes. We get the eggs, we harvest the eggs for the salmon rearing program right here in Lake Sakakawea, and we also raise them right uh, near here too. Yeah, we collect our own eggs uh, in October. Uh, the salmon move in shallow to spawn. Um, there isn't any streams for them to spawn naturally in, so they just kind of cruise along the shoreline in the back of the bays. And we go out with uh, electro fishing gear and collect the egg uh, salmon and take them to the hatchery and spawn the eggs out of them. And then the hatchery hatches the eggs and raises the salmon over winter. And then in the spring of the following year, we'll stock them back out in the Lake Sakakawea. Okay, you don't stock the same number of salmon in Lake Sakakawea every year, do you? I mean, you have to kind of balance the, the prey with the, the predator. Correct, yeah. It changes uh, not every year, but it, kind of depending on what we uh, consider the forage base, the rainbow smelt, which is the main forage of uh, Chinook salmon, we look at our hydroacoustics data, which is the method we use to survey the smelt, and uh, use that to kind of determine how many salmon we're going to stock the following year. That's a really neat process, the hydroacoustics. I mean, they're down so deep, you need some some pretty precise equipment. Yeah, it's basically a fancy depth finder that <laughs> we cruise around in the in the middle of the night, you know, in the, in the new moon phase when it's the darkest, which helps the uh, smelt kind of pull off the bottom and spread out a little bit. So we drive around all night and this fancy depth finder counts the smelt, so. Let's talk about the actual life cycle of the salmon here in Lake Sakakawea and start from, let's say, the hatchery right on up to adulthood. Okay, I guess we're going to start, We, you know, the start would be the spawn in October where we collect the eggs and then the salmon for the most part hatch basically in December and they will raise them over the winter and uh, by spring or May they're five inches long um, and then at that point we will turn around and stock them back in the lake and the first year most people don't see them. I mean they're, you know, we put them in at five inches and they might get up to eight, nine inches by the following spring. So I mean nine to 12 inches the following spring and, and most people don't see them at that point and then through that next summer that's when they start to see them and is what we call one-year-old fish and that's when they return the first time uh, to, to the anglers okay and those are catchable keepable fish right yeah it's up basically a full year after we stock them mm -hmm. before they're a catchable fish how big are they then Th then they'll be in that when the, the lake's full like it is now with good smelt, I mean, they'll be in that three to four or five pounds, you know, a full year later after we stock them. Uh, the two-year-olds can reach that eight, ten pounds, and three-year-olds will, well, your imagination. <laughs> bigger than that. Yeah. All right. You mentioned, Russ, that these are uh, cold water fish, that they hang very, very deep in Lake Sakakawea. Right out here, I know it's 100, 120, 130 feet deep. That takes some special equipment for fishermen to get to them. Yeah, actually out here right now it's it's 150 or 160 feet deep because the lake is, is pretty full. Um, what anglers will use uh, this time of year is called downriggers. Uh, basically you put a big heavy ball on a steel cable and use, attach your fishing lure or your rod line to that to help get it down deep. And then just troll around uh, with a flasher and squid or, you know, to attract them. Okay. You hear a little a lot of talk right now about the health of Lake Sakakawea. The walleyes are doing great, the northerns, the smallmouth bass. How about the salmon populations? Everything is doing great because of the rainbow smelt. I mean, all them species you, you mentioned, 
feed on primarily on rainbow smelt. So if the smelt are doing good, then all those species are doing good along with the Chinook salmon. How's fishing shaping up for this year? So it's just getting started. I mean, I've heard of a few people out, but success is pretty limited. It seems like in July you get that hot weather which pushes down the thermocline and concentrates the fish. And that's when they move down to this end also to kind of stage for spawning. And that's when the salmon fishermen really get into them. All right, it starts um, early to mid July, lasts through September, October? Uh, yeah, I mean, they can catch them all the way through October. Uh, once you get into September, then it, it's people long lining uh, or from shore because the fish start to move shallow. And October is generally shallow fishing, you know, people's fishing offshore. Sure. In order to better manage the resource, Russ, you do a tagging program. Let's talk a little bit about that and how people can become involved. Yeah, every year we tag a percentage of the salmon we stock. Uh, and what that entails is we put a, a little tag that you, you hardly can see with the naked eye and we stick it in the nose of the fish. And the way you can tell your fish would have a tag is the fleshy lobe right in front of the tail on the top of the salmon. It's called an adipose fin. We clip that off. So if you catch a salmon and that adipose fin is missing, most likely it has a tag in its head. And then you can cut the head off and turn that into the game and fish here in Riverdale or the Bismarck office, or you can put it or turn it into one of the gas stations here in Riverdale, the Honey Hole or Scott's Bait and Tackle in Pick City, and they will also accept them and then get them to us. And in the middle of the winter, we'll dig the tags out and read them and, and I'll send a letter back to you with the information on your fish. All right, Russ, thanks. Thank you. If you're planning a trip to the North Dakota State Fair this year, stop in at the Game and Fish Department's Conservation and Outdoor Skills Park. There's plenty to do there without spending a dime. You see, all the venues are free. There's the Hunter Education booth with pellet gun target shooting. The fishing pier is a popular attraction. You and the kids can catch fish and relax. There's an archery booth with target shooting there too. Trapping and fur takers booth is also included. Or if you're just looking for an answer to an outdoor question, stop at the information booth. Or if you're just looking for a shady spot to relax, park yourself under one of the many trees in the park. The Conservation and Outdoor Skills Park is open from 1 to 7 every day of the fair, July 21st through the 29th. For Russ Kinsler and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.